So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for creating space today on your very busy schedules to hear what my colleague Kim and I have to say about changing the way we engage in conversations with the use of debriefing techniques we learned as healthcare simulation educators. My name is Carla Ferreira, and I am a new faculty member at the School of Nursing. I hold an associate professor of teaching role and work closely with undergraduate nursing students. I've been an academic nurse educator since 2012, um, and I started my journey at the University of Calgary, where I also received my bachelor's degree in nursing. Uh, simulation education was introduced to me back in 2014, and since then, I haven't looked back. Uh, sim is definitely my happy place, and I know that this is also an area of interest for my co-presenter and colleague, Kim. Hi, everyone. My name is Kim Bontanen, and I'm sorry if you hear my dog barking in the background, but he'll settle down in a moment. Um, I've been a nurse for 26 years and 17 of those in education. Um, I've been teaching and coordinating in health sciences programs. And um, currently I'm a lecturer. Uh, I'm in the position of lecturer and simulation program coordinator for the School of Nursing here at UBC. Um, I've just joined um, the group, the team uh, in August this year. Uh, so, so welcome. I'm, I'm so pleased to see uh, so many of you here today. And before we begin our land acknowledgement, I actually want to acknowledge that this session is being recorded. Um, and it will be, I think you should have heard a prompt in the background there. Um, the recording will, it will not record the small group activities that we will do later on, um, but it will be shared with um, the participants um, joining us today. So uh, just to begin, I am joining you today from beautiful North Vancouver. Um, I'm an uninvited guest from the unceded and traditional uh, territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, and Musqueam First Nations. And my family and I um, immigrated to Canada back in 1995. And as a settler, I'd like to acknowledge what a privilege what a privilege it is to have the opportunity to live and play and work and learn on this land, which is home to many Indigenous people. Um, I'm joining you today from the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. We invite you to hold space to acknowledge the traditional territories you have the privilege of residing in and invite you to share as you wish using the chat box. Just thought I'd take a look here and see if anybody's popped in where they are coming from today. I bet many of us are coming from, there we go. Thank you, Karen. Musqueam as well. Oh, silks, Tunaksa, Shushwab, Musqueam. Thanks, Ainsley. Okay. So here's our plan. Um, so in the next 80 some minutes or so, um, we'd like what we'd like to do is really spend most of our time together ident uh, solidifying our understanding of advocacy inquiry and apply the framework that we will share with you a little bit later on um, using small group activities. It is our hope that by the end of this session, you'll have the opportunity to build your knowledge and skills in relation to advocacy inquiry. And this is kind of a hidden um, agenda too, is that it isn't just really about knowledge and skills, but also rethinking our stance and our um, kind of like the affective domain in, in, in terms of how does this land on you? Is this something that um, you see um, enacting in, in your various roles. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the learning objectives for today's session, we would like to get to know you. So who is in the room? And um, Carla's gonna pull up a poll here for everybody to complete. Um, identifying, you know, the department or faculty that you come from, your main role, and um, any experience that you've had with simulation. I don't want to cut off everyone, but we're just going to end the poll here and share with you the result. Okay, so 
we've got um, applied science and, and arts, uh, quite a few others. I'm, I'm so interested to hear. So of the other group, who's, who's here joining us today? Education, uh, nursing, and, and the Faculty of Education. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. UBC Health. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And then um, lots of teachers, uh, of course, uh, administration, a student, um, and uh, other as well. And then uh, simulation. So uh, some of you have had exposure in one way or another to simulation learning. Um, the context, uh, we'll talk about We'll talk more about this, but the context of the tool that we're sharing with you um, is utilized within simulated learning in simulation learning environments. Um, but we we're here to um, to kind of um, advocate that that is a strategy we can use in many many areas. Okay, Carla, thank you so much. Okay, so we're quite pleased um, with today's turnout. And what we'd like to also know from you is what about this session? Perhaps it's the description um, through the website that you read. Um, we'd like to know what was it about this session that got you most curious. We want to gather your thoughts using Jamboard. Um, and so the link to the Jamboard will be posted by Kim in the chat box. And when you follow that link, you're not actually going to see the screen that's in front of you. You're going to need to scroll to slide to the very last slide, um, which I believe is slide number six. And um, if you've never used Jamboard before, um, the button that you really would, the, the, the most important button is the button or the icon just below the arrow button. It's called sticky note. Uh, so if we were doing this in person, I'd have sticky notes, handing you sticky notes right now, but we're doing this virtually. So I'm handing you a virtual sticky note. You're just going to click on that icon to jot down what made you choose this session. Um, what are you most curious about? Um, Kim and I will reshare our screen so you can see what others have written down and note that all posts are anonymous. Um, and we're using this time to, to introduce you to Jamboard because we're going to use the same um, technology um, for our small group activity. So pick a sticky note, you can even choose a color and jot down what got you, what got you most curious. I'm gonna find you're gonna find me stop sharing and I will be sharing the Jamboard um, instead. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'm most curious about drawn by the word debrief. Yes. Debriefing challenging encourages. Yeah. Oh yes. Mm, the title. So like, here's an insider thing. When we were coming up with a title for this uh, session, um, it's quite fascinating being, Kim and I are new to working with each other and we're both new to the faculty. Um, but the first part is actually Kim. Um, that, that, was, uh, that, that was from her. And the last part was my, my, my contribution. So this is very special for us. It's our first, um, it's the first time presenting in this big UBC um, format. So thank you so much for choosing this session today. So yeah, this will this will we we will revisit this section um, again. But thank you for sharing what 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 got you really curious because yeah. um, I think that's the stance we're going to be taking on. Um, for this afternoon. I'm gonna stop sharing this one and I'm gonna go back to the presentation. So like I said, thank you for sharing your curiosities with us. This is a really great segue actually to the main idea of this session, which is the advocacy inquiry um, approach or style of debriefing. Um, so when, just to address the person's um, curiosity around debriefing. So debriefing is the final phase of any simulated learning or simulation-based learning activity where what we end up doing is we 
we, we put learners through a simulated event. Um, and because Kim and I both work in healthcare, it is usually a healthcare related scenario. Um, students or learners who participate in activities um, end up using problem um, solve their problem solving skills, their clinical judgment skills in order to um, solve a particular situation. Um, that's not, yes, learning happens during that moment, but it's actually this debriefing um, section where a lot of the debriefing or a lot of the learning uh, happens. Um, and the debriefing is a time for the facilitators and the learners to come together to talk about what happened um, and not just what happened but why something happened and what are some of the key learnings uh, what we want to draw on um, are key learnings from these experiences because the goal is to influence actions or thoughts that results in certain um, events so kim will we will visit that a little bit later on um, so thank you for, for, for sharing that. Um, like I said, a great segue to the main point of this session, which is to talk about advocacy inquiry. This definition comes from the Healthcare Simulation Dictionary. Um, and what I want you to focus on are um, the yellow um, phrases and the ones that are colored in green. The yellow one pertains to advocacy. Advocacy is what you as the observer um, share. It is um, you, you state what you have observed um, in relation to someone's performance or behavior. Um, and the inquiry part, which is the green part, is the part where you ask learners or the other person that you're having a conversation with to share an explanation of their thoughts or actions. And when we pair advocacy and inquiry together, it results in a meaningful dialogue or um, conversation, um, as opposed to just having this back and forth discussing ideas and who's right, who's wrong type of approach. So let's talk a little bit more about advocacy inquiry. So what advocacy inquiry is asking us to do is to see conversations we have as an opportunity to engage in dialogue. Dialogue comes from the Greek roots dia, meaning through or across, and log or logos um, pertains to uh, discourse or talk. Conversations or dialogues are meant to be a mechanism, uh, a mechanism for us to suspend assumptions and enter into a genuine thinking together. Um, and that last phrase right there, last section, actually came from the author of the fifth discipline, Peter Senge. So if you've, if you've read that book, um, Peter Senge talks about uh, team learning and where he talks about the difference between discussions um, and turning these discussions into dialogue in order for us to, to learn. Um, Peter Senge also said that to the Greeks, dialogos meant a free flowing of meaning through a group allowing the group to discover insights not attainable um, individually. So what it's asking, uh, what, what dialogue or, and, and Peter is asking us to do is to consider whenever we enter in these um, conversations to frame it or see it from a we stance as opposed to an I stand solely. Um, what he's asking us to consider is to take a stance where our goal is to understand others' perspectives, um, where they're coming from, uh, as opposed to engaging in a discussion where the stance is to get as many ideas out as possible and where it feels like there is a search for the best idea. The stance that Dialogues encourages, encourages us to do is to uncover as many perspectives as possible for the purpose of learning so that perhaps we can unlearn and relearn how we ought to proceed and engage. Let's take a look at an example of a conversation between Jason and Monica. Some of you may have seen um, this video before, and if that is the case, what I'm hoping we would, the, we, what we're hoping you would do is to 
see it in a in a different um, in a different lens. So this time around, we want you to consider how this conversation could have been improved when we pair advocacy or our observations with inquiry or the act of hearing the other person's explanation of their thoughts or actions. And this video should take about less than two minutes. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless. And I don't know if it's gonna stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever gonna stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop I'll... trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing- You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. No, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, out. you're not even listening now. Okay, fine, I will listen, fine. It's just, sometimes it's like, there's this achy, I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. Yeah, I, that sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh, come on, Ow. if you would just- Don't! Try to see things my way Do I have to keep on talking till I can go on? All right. So um, just a little bit of a recap. Um, it, 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 all, it, it, I laugh every single time. Earlier we were practicing and uh, we, we just seen this video and it, like Kim said, it always gets us every single time because it's so relatable. How many conversations have we had or we've been in where it was more of a discussion as in terms of it's almost like a tennis match right so here's here's what i see here's my idea here's your idea and there's really no listening that's happening there's not a whole lot of advocacy that's that's going on there's just telling and i suppose the lesson um, in this video is it's not always about the nail oftentimes whatever we see certain behaviors it's not always um, what we assume that that behavior um, that behavior is is taking place for a whole new other reason we don't even know it because we haven't yet created space to hear the other person's frame. Let me turn on my volume here. So. Um... I'm going to talk a little bit about advocacy inquiry specifically, and the main purpose of advocacy inquiry is to understand in order to facilitate and uh, facilitate learning and encourage growth. Um, to do this, we uncover the what uh, that leads to a behavior, action, or outcome, which is known as the person's frame. We use this with learners, but we advocate for this strategy whenever you encounter a situation to ensure that you are checking your facts and building that pool of knowledge from the perspectives of others, from their frames that you may have never considered. Thank you, Carla. Um, so what I'm going to do is just walk you through the framework. And later in this session, Carla will distill it down even further for us. Um, so it, it just begins with observation. So you observe an event or the result of somebody's actions. The next piece is to comment on the observation that you had and advocate for your position around it. After that, you're going to explore the drivers behind the student or whoever it is that you're having a conversation with to uncover their frames. Um, uh, because we want to understand the actions that they think led to the observed event 
or the result of an action. And then together, you're going to discover ways to attend to this issue that arose uh, to um, work towards more of a positive result. So that is the framework. And uh, considering the time of year, I thought we could work with an in-person cheating example. Um, okay, so this is how it, the kind of the, the quick and dirty rundown of this framework. So you observe an event. Um, you're circulating around, so this is you, I'm, I'm speaking like it, this is your experience observing the event. So you're circulating around the room and notice that Joey's eyes seem to find Riley's paper on more than one occasion. So in the moment you remind Riley or you remind Joey to keep their eyes on their own paper um, and they look flustered and, and really surprised by your comment. You don't want to disrupt the exam, so you ask a colleague to focus on the back of the room where Joey is sitting, and then you continue to circulate around and invigilate the exam until its completion. After the exam, you ask Joey to meet for a few minutes. And at this point, you're going to comment on your observations and advocate for your position. So it would sound something like this. Joey, I noticed that your eyes wandered toward Riley's test paper more than once over the exam time. And I'm concerned about cheating and academic honesty. How do you see it? And then Riley would say, oh, I wasn't cheating. I promise you I wasn't cheating. And then what you could say to explore the drivers is, okay, what was going on for you in those moments? And then Joey might say, actually, it's a really long exam. I'm prone to having dry eyes. I was only giving them a rest from focusing so hard on my own paper. And I didn't even realize I was looking that way. And then in the discovery piece, because it's still not okay, that strategy is not great. Um, you could say, okay, I agree. It is a long exam. And I understand that you were resting your eyes rather than trying to find ans answers on Riley's test. Um, that behavior is problematic during test taking. And I wonder if you can think of a strategy to avoid that next time. And that is kind of a, an example of how you would work through this framework using an AI method. Um, okay, so continuing on. Uh, in terms of uncovering those learner frames, um, student frames can also be described as the rationale for their actions. Um, their actions are the behaviors they exhibit, and these behaviors inform the decisions they make that lead to an outcome or the result here. Um, we want to provide you with a strategy to analyze the results by having learners walk you through their actions to uncover their frames or the ways they were thinking. Um, as we showed you earlier, you may think you know, it's not about the nail, um, why they performed outside of the expected outcome, but until you uncover their frame, which can be so surprising at times, it can be difficult to provide the right adjustments and could shut down the learning dialogue. And this could leave the student walking away without really understanding what they can do to change. So new frames can equal new actions, which will inevitably equal new results. Or in our, our, our world of simulation, um, another way of looking at this is that debriefing leads to new frames and changes later actions. Now, that's a lot about the student or the other person, the one that was being observed. Um, instructors or whoever's doing the observation also come with frames. Um, so for the facilitator or an instructor, a frame consisting of what do I think about the learner's actions is quite different and not as open as why did the student perform or respond in the way that they did? And we want to ask ourselves with um, this question from a place of wonder and genuine curiosity so that we create an opportunity for the learner or that other individual on the other side of this conversation to feel safe in the learning space and to promote honesty when we are attempting to, to discover the frame. Okay, thank you, Carla. 
All right. Now, Carla is going to, like I said, distill this down even further and provide this really great cognitive aid on creating a tale. Okay, so let's put this in a pail. Uh, so next time you are in any of these situations where you're really stumped with why is this happening at this time and how am I going to approach or even begin to approach this conversation, think about pail. Let's try and put it in a pail. So P-A-A-I-L stands for preview, advocacy one, advocacy two, inquiry and listen. Um, I didn't invent this. I wish I did, but it, I didn't. It is from the Harvard MedSim. Um, as part of as my, my role as a simulation educator uh, requires a lot of faculty development around debriefing. As I mentioned earlier, debriefing has been um, it's known to be the the space where learning where learning happens. Um, and while there are easy debriefs, there are also very challenging debriefs and and we often um, engage in hard um, conversations or difficult conversations because we're really navigating this space around we can't just see uh, certain actions or inactions as a deliberate response to something. Um, at our simulation center, we hold um, learners in, in high regard. And when we say that, what we mean is that we hold learners, um, what, what, how we see learners is that they are intelligent, they are capable, they are smart, they are willing to do their best, and they are in the space that they are in because they want to truly improve. So when Kim says take a stance of curiosity, that's when we, um, that's, that's the stance that we need to be in, is in this holding them to high regard, have a basic assumption that they're there, and they're really try, truly wanting to do their, their best. Um, and in order to use PALE, it also asks us to change the way that we see the world in order for us to engage in this way of, of having a conversation. So preview, let's talk about that one. Preview is about um, letting the other person know what, what it is that you want to talk about. If you are a fan of Brene Brown's work, uh, I don't know if you've seen posters that says clear is kind, this is that. Um, I don't know how many emails you've received or an invitation or maybe a text message that says, oh, I need to talk to you about something. And oftentimes that sends us into a place where, oh my goodness, am I in trouble? Depending on who's requesting um, to have a conversation with us, oftentimes we think, am I in trouble? Am I going to get fired? What did I do wrong? So preview, signpost for the person you want to talk to, um, kind of to, to prepare themselves, what it is that we are going to talk about. Um, and if it's not you that that requested um, to have a conversation and in in let's say the learner um, or a student says, I, I, we need to talk, we need to talk about this paper that I failed, um, you can ask for more clarification. I said, yeah, I recognize you want to talk about your paper. What is it about? What it is about your paper that you would like to talk about, um, and this also allows you to manage the the, the cognitive load of of um, what this conversation um, would look like, and it allows you to prepare. Advocacy one is all about offering our observations, right? So this is when you will say, "I saw." X or I heard Y. Um, one thing that I have adopted using um, the pale approach is the um, prompt I noticed. Kim, I noticed that when we were at this meeting, um, I noticed that you, you looked really upset. And, and that concerns me because our relationship is really important to me. And, and I'd like for us to, um, I'd, I'd like to hear um, what um, what was going through um, your mind at that time. So advocacy one is offering that observation. I also attach advocacy two uh, in that example that I just gave. Um, advocacy two is all about offering your perspective. I think I'm concerned because 
So in, in the healthcare simulations that we have done, um, a great example that we usually, or an example that we use would be during um, chest compressions. And students sometimes do their chest compressions and they're either going too slow or going too fast. Um, and we know that there is an appropriate rate that they need to follow. And when we're not seeing that rate being followed, we get concerned. And so usually what this would sound like would be, um, I'd like to talk to you about um, how you approach that, uh, the, that the, how you did your chest compressions. Um, what I saw is that you were going below the recommended rate of at least 100 compressions per minute. And I'm concerned because that's not enough in order to do X, Y, and Z. Inquiry follows. And this inquiry part begins with, I wonder, or now that I've mentioned that, what do you think about it? How do you, how do you see it? And the hardest part, I think, is number five, which is to listen. This is when we need to sit on our hands and hear for those frames. And oftentimes learners would say, you know what? I've never actually done chest compression before. I never realized how much of a, um, an effort it is to meet X, Y, and Z expectations. And when we uncover these frames during this moment of listening, we can then correct certain um, misconceptions, uh, knowledge gap um, in order to influence future results. So hang on to, or open this up in your, um, in a separate browser. This will serve as a cognitive aid for when we move into the activity, just to remind you of um, how the different sections sound like or could be phrased. Um, and then we'll walk you through the activity. You will need the Jamboard link again for this. And I will post that here as well. And Kim, take it away. Okay, so um, sure I'm, yeah, I'm muted. Okay, so we are going to ask you in small groups to create your own pail based on your observations of this short, um, funny light video. Um, and after you do that, um, create your pail together. Um, we would like to offer some, one group to, you know, share what they, they went through and we can look at that and offer some feedback. Um, so before, you know, with, without further ado, Carla, we can load up the video and Carla will walk us through the, um, the, the uh, jam board again to make sure that everybody understands how to work through this activity um, after, after we watch the video. Okay. Any questions before, before we play? Um, Carla, I just want to say that Cynthia, um, her volume was, was she, low? She asked if we could turn it up and I, I don't know if we can do that on our end. If we can, mm -hmm. that would be helpful. Yeah, my volume is maxed um, on this one, but I'm going to see once I play the video, uh, I can see if I can change. Yeah, C Cynthia, volume. let us know. Let us know what it sounds like. Yeah, for I, you. Had, I had my volume up at max as well. Mm -hmm. And right. it was quiet. Okay. I figured. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if, um, bear with me here. I'm going to play and then I'm going to see if I, if I note um, a volume button.
right, Mr. Vile, is it? Uh, my friends call me Flem. Uh-huh. Mr. Vile, can you tell me what you did wrong? I fell down? No, no, before that. Can anyone tell me Mr. Vile's big mistake? Anyone? <coughs> Ugh. Let's take a look at the tape. Here we go. Uh, right... Ba -ba 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 -ba. There. See? The door. You left it wide open. Mm. Uh and leaving the door open is the worst mistake any employee can make because... Um, it could let in a draft? It could let in a child! Oh, Mr. Waternews! There's nothing more toxic or deadly than a human child. A single... All right. Thank you, Carla. So just um, what we'd like you to do now is... Um, uh, go into your breakout rooms and try to prepare a pail that um, as a facilitator that is a little bit more conducive to learning. Um, uh, so in that uh, taking on the role of the facilitator in that simulation and preparing a pail for that dear little monster who was just trying to work his way through a learning uh, scenario. Okay. So let me just reorient you back to the Jamboard. Uh, the link is in the chat box. Um, and what we'll do then is we'll put you in smaller groups. And what you will do is depending, you'll, you'll, you'll be asked to, or you'll be randomly placed in a group. And what we'll, we'd like to ask you is to remember which breakout room you are in. Your breakout room number will correspond to your slide number here on the Jamboard. So if you're in breakout room, breakout room number one, then you're in group one, slide number one. If you are in breakout room number two, you just hit next frame, quite fitting for what we're talking about. And you just go into the second slide and you fill in um, slide number two. Um, sticky notes, you just put that under preview, jot down what are you going to say in your preview? Um, what are you going to say in your advocacy one? And our goal is to help um, Flem or Mr. Bile mm -hmm. um, and Flint, who is the monster facilitator, to have a conversation framed using um, the advocacy inquiry framework using PALE. All right. So far, so good. Okay. All righty. So let me just put you in groups, which I don't think I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, Breakout rooms. Right. Oh, there. Never mind. Okay. I have it. It was just me panicking. <laughs> all right so we are 12 in the room maybe we'll make four rooms or three rooms kim preference um i i three three is fine yeah. sure sounds mm -hmm. good oh okay. here we go so you're going to be pulled into these rooms and um make sure that um one person does the note taking and can has that um the note taker needs to have that jamboard um jamboard oh, up yeah in order to document your 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 statements um and your your questions and then um we'll give you seven eight minutes for for this one we'll do a check-in you'll notice kim and i popping in popping out of different rooms just to see um if we can offer um, any help in any way and then you'll have a warning a one minute warning saying wrap it up we will come back to the main room as a group and then kim will lead us into a micro debrief of that situation all right um so far so good Thank you for the head nods, and here we go. I'm so sorry, Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia got pulled out of the room mid sentence. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll be quiet and let Kim take it away. Okay. Um. So. Um. Okay, I want to actually go back to uh, your point, Cynthia, in a moment that you were trying to express, because I think it probably is something relevant for the entire uh, group. Um, but all, all I want to do is just a quick little, um, you know, kind of what went well and what was challenging. So so what was surprising and, and really easy about 
or, or natural about the task that you, you had in front of you? Anybody? Was there any component that, that was like, okay, I got this. Well, those five letters, that's pretty clear. Yeah. yeah that it was good to have the, the, um, the memory tool, like that, that, that memory aid, right? Um, Karen, your hand is um, nice. Yeah, Kim, thanks for, I just thought I'd perhaps open the door, but uh, or uh, kick in a closed door. Um, I shared when we started our conversation, but I actually thought it was, um, I mean, I'm very comfortable and familiar with, um, what's it called, the AI inquiry approach, but uh, not so much in the class. And so I thought as a um, non-native English and coming from a different cultural social cultural context. Um, I think it was it's a very soft way of uh, having a conversation. And um, so I actually think what a great, when I saw it, what a great introduction to having a, what could possibly be a difficult conversation and really appreciating the emotions that may come up for a student when, and, and, and ensuring keeping the focus on a safe, um, Thank, thank you, Karen. Thank you for sharing your, your thoughts um, around the AI method. Um, and so I guess anybody else, was there anything, any, any comments you'd like to make before we start to unpack some of the challenges that you might have had? <laughs> uh, Cynthia, you raised your hand. Well, I was going to talk about the challenges. Please um, do, please do. Okay, so um, I wasn't really familiar with the whole context of Monsters Inc. Right. and and sort of the cultural component of of being a monster and the Monsters Inc. And so I think that is a really critical point for our learners that our learners might not understand the context that they are in, and the observer might not know the learner's background or their cultural background or what the objective is. And, and so I think that's really a critical piece because once we didn't know, a few of us in our group didn't know, well, why is it important that the door is open or closed? Like for us, that wasn't a, a key element, but in the context of a monster, it is. So Thank you. Um, so if it was an, it, um, it would be your observation of the learner or of the, you, you would be intimately familiar with the circumstances. Um, you'd need to explore the frames because you may not understand, um, you know, Karen, you, you even pulled in like cultural, their own cultural frameworks, their own um whatever that might be um but when we're using it in debriefing a simulation which we were trying to emulate with you you would have known what the learning objectives were for that simulation um you would have had all of that up front um we just you know pulled out this this um piece of um of the video so the importance of having all of that is you're right you need that you need to understand what the goal was, and you wouldn't have known that if you didn't have familiarity with that film. Mm -hmm. and, what and did you I, say, Carla? Well, Ellen, um, Ellen's uh, left the room, but she actually mentioned too that you know we need to know more a bit about the monster culture to understand why that that specific yeah. behavior is is of concern. Um, and then you think about the many times that we have been in a situation where we work with new teams and you have no idea what the culture, what, what the water is that you're swimming in. And AI sometimes helps as well to say, this is my observation. I'm noticing that um, I'm noticing that there's really a um, a need or maybe a to people, are, it's very strict that you must follow these rules. And that's what I'm noticing. That's what I'm observing. I'm curious to hear um, what people's thoughts are about that, because where I've come from and what I've been exposed to, this has been the, the our, our pattern. Um, so this is when you can open up that discussion around 
what am I, what, what, what is it? The, um, why is whatever I'm observing, is there a cultural component or um, uh, that you're not privy to quite yet? Go ahead, Pia. I'm just wondering if it would have been helpful since the movie was very short, if you had played it twice mm. and we would have had the opportunity to catch much more because yeah. it okay. goes so fast. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of visual coming at you in that, in that clip. Mm -hmm. For thank sure. You. I, thank I'll you for sure that, to feedback. Write that feedback. Yeah. 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 Also, we could, um, when I set up the activity, I'll give you the goal ahead of time. Yeah, a little more of that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I want to so, um, kind of bring our debriefing piece to a close for this activity. Uh, we have um, about 20 minutes left, Carla, um, in this session. We have one more activity uh, that we'd, we'd like you to work on just to give you another practice at creating um, the advocacy inquiry statement. So um, if the group is open to that, we can um, uh, share one more type of example so you can get another crack at it. Mm -hmm. um, or we we can sort of summarize the learning here today. It's, it's a small group of us now. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, um, I'd like for us to, so there are two scenarios that, that we'd like for you to think about. And maybe this time around, um, it, it might be a little bit more familiar to us because it's, it's either going to come from a, um, an academic standpoint or perhaps also drawing from our personal experiences. So the first mm -hmm. scenario to think about is that um, you're grading a midterm paper and notice that one of the students didn't address any of the components of the rubric. And as a result of that, they failed um, this paper. And now they've come to see you during office hours to discuss this paper. And uh, the other scenario that your group might want to consider um, to create a pail is um, your child comes home from school um, or and, and forgot to bring home their rain jacket. And this isn't the first time it's happened. This is a, a behavior that's that's happened before at least three more times this year. And you've had to replace this jacket once already. I swear this is like my son. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, so you can draw from those two experiences, or the third option actually is to come up with a scenario that you were just in, um, that you feel comfortable sharing with your group. And let's let's reflect on maybe perhaps a conversation that's already been had and see how how AI could reframe um, that approach to that conversation. So what you'll what you'll end up going back to is that Jamboard, and there's a the, the stickies are the scenarios are posted there for you, um, and and um, we'll we'll watch you. I I noticed that the group that I was uh, observing, I noticed that um, you all worked well together. I noticed that it was easy to come up with a preview. You came up really quickly with your first advocacy. And it's almost like when I was hearing you talk about your advocacy one, you needed to know why you wanted to talk about that advocacy one first. So you almost have to think about the advocacy two part. It's like that door being opened and how you entered in that room in the way that you did is problematic because, and then you had to almost like work backwards in order to fill in those statements. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. that was my observation of that group. I thought that it came naturally for 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 those folks actually. So let's yeah. give it one more try in the spirit of deliberate practice and yeah. um and then we'll we'll summarize everything. Yeah, at the, um and then at the end of this one, we would uh welcome one of you to share the jam board and we can walk through and see what was missing. Do we choose either example? Yeah, one or the other is yeah. fine, Sue. And you'll see them listed there when you open up your jam board. Okay, so it was a group group one or group two, I guess. Or, yeah, so um, just rejoin your your previous group. We'll put the breakout rooms up, and you can choose your own. The, well, actually, the last couple of slides is just us. We're doing it already. And then yeah. the very last one is a list of our references. And as always, we 
value your feedback. Um, let us know how we can tweak this presentation um, better, um, what worked for you, what didn't work for you. The link is in the chat box. Um, Kim and I would really appreciate um, to, to hear from you. Um, but uh, thank you for your engagement. And what Kim and I will do, we'll, we will have a copy of the presentation for you with all of the live links. And um, in there too, I'll have um, articles that you could refer to in relation to advocacy inquiry and another form of debriefing, um, which which other, if, if you are into simulation might be also helpful just to expand that, you know, your our declarative knowledge around around this um, concept of AI. And as always, if you ever want to have a coffee or a chat or a coffee chat, Kim yeah. and I are such simulation geeks, and uh, <laughs> we're we're happy to we're happy to chit chat. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, uh, just one thing that I don't, I, I want to leave you with and because I don't want you to leave here feeling that you always have to use this strategy. There's a, there's a time and a place. Um, and sometimes just what you said, uh, just cued me, Cynthia is they may not be ready for this. So you don't always need to do it right in the moment. Like it might be one week later, you send a message to the student saying, you know, I, I noticed um, that that you were showing some some discomfort in our last conversation. I'd like you to come back so that we can explore this further. So that's your 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 piece, right? So it can come later because if somebody's really fueled up, AI could work, but it's it's challenging, especially if you're not um, really slick with the process and it's a learning uh, deliberate practice. You have to practice it all the time. So I'll leave you with practice on your 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 partners, your family members, your um, colleagues, anytime you can try to pull something together, give it a go. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it from me. Well, thank you very much again. And we hope that you have a great rest of your day. And um, hopefully we get to see each other again at some point. Okay, happy holidays. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Thank you.